bottom dollar. Whoop, sorry for that. <laughs> you know what's funny? Here in the Do Dominican Republic, we have so many sunny days that we celebrate the rainy days. So this is our version of a blizzard, a snowstorm, or basically a day to stay home and get things done. So I'm Patrick Johnston, managing broker and owner of GoDominicanLife.com, LasTerrenusLife.com, here in beautiful, non-sunny Dominican Republic today, but we're here. Sorry for my singing abilities. Today's video is about ways to invest in real estate assets in the Dominican Republic. What different styles of investing that you can do uh, to maximize your growth, minimize your risk, and to really get started in real estate in the Dominican Republic. So we're going to talk about one, two, three, four, five, six different versions of how to do it. And not any specific order. I'll give my comments on each one. So let's get started. Number one, uh, buy undervalued property. Doesn't matter what it is. Uh, a condo, a villa, a piece of land, uh, something that, uh, a home that has the ability to add a second apartment or a casita, a little apartment on the land behind the main villa, something like that. So you can either fix it up, you can rent it once it's fixed, and then you can sell it. So undervalued property is a little harder to come by these days because of the demand that's required. Just like in North America, Canada, the United States, demand for real estate in the Dominican Republic is high. So you have to really be aware of what's around you and get used to it and then be ready to jump on something that makes sense for you. So buying undervalued property is more appropriate for someone that has experience, uh, that has the time to do the work themselves or to organize the work themselves or has a business partner or some form of management company that they can work with to get the things done they need on the property and also to get it rented, get it cash flow and moving forward. As a company, we can offer that service for you, property management, property improvement, Airbnb and short-term rental management. We can even help you on financing. But undervalued property doesn't mean that it is stinky, ugly, etc. <coughs> it can be as simple as, you know, the furniture needs changing because you're not getting enough rental flow. Uh, it can be uh, a new paint throughout. It can be new flooring in certain areas, maybe a new kitchen or a new bathroom. But keep in mind, these expenses in this country are far less than what you would pay in North America because everything is generally made of concrete. So we don't have drywall issues and holes in walls and things to, to think about that way. We have more of uh, their hard surfaces that would re need remodeling or tile. Uh, wood is expensive relative to this market compared to a couple years ago, but the overwhelming savings for you in North America when you're looking at this market is the labor side because you're not dealing with uh, 30 to $100 an hour for labor. You're dealing with anything between uh, 800 to 1,000 pesos, so $20 a day for general labor to a specialist, maybe 40 to $60 a day for someone that's doing hardcore electrical, hardcore plumbing, that type of thing. Number two, you can be a wholesaler. I don't recommend this, but it's, a, it's an option. I call that very speculative. I don't think it has a lot of skill. I think uh, it's highly risky but I've seen people do it. I've had clients this past year that did it successfully, acquire and sell. But let me just explain what that means. So uh, in, let's use wholesaling as simple as you find a property that you like for whatever it means. Let's use the example of an undervalued property. So you found this smoking deal and you en engaged our services to get that property under contract and let's pretend it was closing in 60 days, 90 days, 120 days, and you had a 30-day option uh, or two-week option to get all of your details together, you can sell that contract to a third party before the closing date with a different price if you can. 
it's done this past year we had clients that did it and they bought a say for example two bedroom condos that were under construction they put them under contract in january or february roughly and then by august or september when the product was or the property of the condo building was ready to be delivered and finished they didn't even physically close on it they sold the contract and made a gain of about 40 or 50 grand and they had two condos that way so that's called wholesaling it's called speculative it's called very dangerous in my opinion because you're really not doing anything to improve on the real estate you're only selling the paper contract so that's an option not something I would consider as being a skilled option in fact I don't think it has any skill I think it's dumbass luck that the market's going like this and you find something like in the middle number three is called house hacking uh, the house hacking is the way that everyone gets started uh, literally you could do that in your own country I did it 30 years ago when I bought my first property house hacking is simple as this back in my example 30 years ago I bought a four bedroom house it had a living room a dining room three bedrooms and a large basement uh, I lived in a college town so I uh, added two more bedrooms converted the dining room to a bedroom and put a bedroom in the basement I still had two living spaces had enough bathrooms to serve everybody and then I rented those rooms out but remember I was 20 or 21 years old so I lived in a I created a six bedroom house five people paying me rent so my rent my mortgage payment maybe was four hundred dollars at the time and I was getting four hundred dollars a room so four five people times four hundred is two thousand dollars four hundred dollar mortgage payment I had to pay the utilities I was still up maybe a thousand bucks or twelve hundred dollars net per month that's called house hacking that's very rudimentary entry-level stuff but another way to do house hacking is that you buy a triplex you live in one and you rent the other two out or you buy a single-family home at a rental on top or a casita or small apartment in the back and you rent that out short-term or long-term rental and that offsets your general expenses for the home, your operating expenses, and maybe some form of contribution to your uh, mortgage payment in, in whatever way. House hacking is a big deal. Not many, not many people can afford to pay fully cash for a $300,000 home and use it for two or four weeks a year. Okay? So house hacking gives you the option of you can have privacy and never rent your space out, but always rent the other one or two apartments out either directly to the consumer or with a property management company such as us real estate company uh, and do either short-term or long-term rental house hacking is something I always suggest to people and uh, because it's for me as an investor it's that's your your blood that's your lifeblood and your fundamentals of investing number four is group investing I've done it successfully I set up, a, we bought a million dollar villa, well actually I bought a $500,000, $525,000 villa here in the Dominican Republic. Uh, I bought that wholesale, paid cash, built it brand new, and then I subdivided, I bought it in, inside of a company name and then issued shares and brought different people that wanted to have a $1 million house experience into the mix so I, ret I still retain 40% of that asset 60% I subbed out which I raised uh, about $600,000 so I raised all of my costs and all of my expenses back including all the furniture etc uh, so my cash was out I still retained 40% and the rental flow we did a, a long-term rental contract to a resort here so none of us use the asset for personal use. Uh, we can, but we have agreed that it's going to cost each party so much per week or per day if we choose to do that. None of us has really done it yet that way. So we just take the cash flow. It's about $40,000 American a year, which is pretty good. It's not, it's not tremendous, but when people were investing twenty-five dollars or $30,000 each at the time, uh, this is going back 10 years ago when we did this, it's a great way for someone to say, I own a million dollar asset that's appreciating. I don't have to put a lot into it. I don't have to do anything to do with it. 
I don't have to handle any tenants or repair and maintenance, et cetera. It's all part of the program. So that's called group investing. It's, it's advisable. It's wise to uh, um, have a third party doing some part of the accounting and management, just so it keeps it even across all people. No one gets their nose out of whack. Um, but it's, it's a good way to get started. And, and group investing can be with a couple of couples, uh, maybe your family uh, investing with your parents, your parents investing with you, uh, your brothers or your sisters. Uh, you can run into difficulties, especially with family and friends, because life changes people. You know, you never know what's going to happen 10 years from now. So you have to build in some sort of contingency clauses for an exit plan for people to do when it's convenient uh, for them. Uh, but in this situation, it was an all-cash purchase, so we have zero debt. So even in the pandemic, when, say, the resort was closed here in the Dominican Republic, we didn't have expenses. We had property taxes, but we had hedged for that over the years, so we had it built up. So it, there's another way of uh, investing. It's called group investing. The next one is called generational investing. Many people in today's world, especially in higher-priced cities, some parents uh, have decided to invest in their children to get them started with real estate or investing prior to their passing as part of the, a way of uh, passing on and watching generational wealth being created while they're still alive. So basically, passing inheritance down to your, uh, either your parents to you or you to your parents uh, by giving your parents a place to live in the sun uh, and then doing it that way. So generational investing is good. You should always do it in a company name because if one of the parties passes away, the company that holds the asset can still run. We had an example of that, uh, a seller client of ours uh, during the pandemic, uh, a fairly major landowner in the Dominican Republic, uh, and that gentleman, uh, without really much notice, like three or five days, uh, passed away from uh, COVID. But the assets that he owned, and a lot of them, were in a company name, and his sons were named as uh, beneficiaries to uh, the estate, or the, uh, were assigned as the company. So it, it didn't go through a whole bunch of crap. Uh, it just continued right away. And the sons have decided to do whatever they decided to do with the property without a gap. So generational income I would always do inside of an LLC or an SLR, they call that here in the Dominican Republic, uh, to make sure that the, the, in case of situations like that, it can move forward fairly quickly. The last one I'm going to talk to you about, and we talked about it sort of, is uh, different from wholesaling, because wholesaling is something that you go into deliberately to get out of and never close on something. But this is sort of like that. It's called pre-construction. So a lot of assets in this country, especially larger assets, condominium complexes or resort complexes that are called apart hotels, they can be range from you know, uh, 25, 30 units to right now was lo uh, launched one in Las Torinas for 435 units. Um, that was launched for example, on August, uh, January 27th for 435 units, starting at $199 uh, to $260,000 for a condo, two bedroom, two, bed, two and a half bath. They will start construction in August 2022 and they will deliver the finished project in August of 2024. So ways to invest in pre-construction in that example is that you can get in with $5,000 down today. Within 30 days, you'll have to go to 20% down total. And during the entire construction stage, so between any time between now and August of 2024, you'll have to come up with 40% of the total. So let's use round numbers and say 200,000. 40% of 200,000 is $80,000 over two years. Some people may say that's a walk in the park. Others may say, eh, that's a little bit risky. Others will say, well, I'm just going to take $80,000 in refinance out of an asset in Canada and hold this asset for appreciation 
and by the time August 2024 comes, they either want to sell it for a gain or retain it and pay the cash and difference because of the market appreciation in either or both countries. Pre-construction is always a good idea. It's been very lucrative for people in major urban centers in Canada and the United States because uh, the developers will, in this 40% total that's required down between now and the end of August 2024, they, if you set up a plan, plan to pay it monthly or quarterly, they don't care. As long as you say what you're going to do and do what you're going to say and within the time frame that they tell you that meets the guidelines of the contract, then you're fine. So there's nothing better than pre-construction because also in pre-construction, you don't have property taxes, you don't have utilities, you don't have property management, and you don't have any tenants to deal with. You're really hedging on an appreciation and an asset in a country that's doing very well. So these are the top reasons or top ways to invest in real estate here in the Dominican Republic. They're fundamental globally, there's no doubt. They have a slight twist down here because uh, of simply being a warm climate. So we have things that we don't have to consider like snow and ice and heating and other things like that, or, which would be other kinds of expenses that you have to consider. So I'm Patrick Johnston. I'm the co-owner and managing broker of GoDominicanLife.com, LasTerrenusLife.com, here in sort of the cloudy, rainy Dominican Republic today. You can always reach out to me on WhatsApp at 829-525-525. 1782, 829-525-1782, right here on the screen. Don't forget to always like this, subscribe to our channel for additional information as we come up. We're releasing two or three videos every single day to give you education and support on how to invest and own real estate in the Dominican Republic. So as we say, life is always better at the beach. Talk to you soon. Adios.